Amen. We are saying to pray for us tonight. Heavy burden on our heart. Dealing with very serious times. Very serious times. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. I'm sorry. Let's begin at verse number one. <coughs> verse number one. Now these are they that came to David to Ziglag. While he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers of war. They were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. So David was in trouble with Saul. And here, some came to support and to respect time. This whole chapter is breaking down those who came and supported and various attributes of them. Okay, let's look at a few. Verse 24. The children of Judah that bear shield and spear were 6,800. So here was children of Judah. You had the 12 tribes, the children of Judah came, and not only did they come, but they had the ability to bear shield and a spear. And they were ready and armed to the war. So they weren't just Israelites, but they were children of Judah, and they had the ability to bear a shield and a spear. All right, let's go down to verse 30. And the children of Ephraim, uh -huh. 20,800 mighty Lord. men of value. Yes. Famous throughout the house of their fathers. These brothers was men of valor. And they were so effective in warfare that their fame went out all throughout the land. Come on and read. And go down to verse 33. Of Zebulon, uh -huh. such as went forth to battle, uh -huh. expert in war, uh -huh. with all instruments of war. My Lord, these individuals, they were experts in warfare. And they were what? 50,000. No, which, experts in war. With, with all, all instruments, instruments of, war. of war. So not a shield, not a spear, not a sword, not a stone. Like every single instrument of warfare, they were experts in every single one of them. David was getting some supporters. 34. And of I'm sorry, go back to 33. Let's finish it out. Of Zebulon, such as went forth to battle. There was tremendous Zebulon, some tremendous brothers that showed up. Come on and read. Expert in war, with yes. all instruments of war. Yes. 50,000. Yes. Which could keep rank. My Lord! They could keep rank. They was in shape. They was ready. They could keep rank. You wasn't going to wear them. I call another prayer meeting. They, I'm ready. Fast day, I'm ready. They could keep rank with the message. They walk in the light. The song, walk in the light, the message come forth, they had the ability. See, some people, they're good, but they can't keep rank. The message go forth, the message get hot, they lag behind the message. But see, some saints can keep rank. Brother Hampton came down through the year, he would preach the gospel. Some saints, my God, would just walk in the light. My God, they go home, clean their closet out. I got to put some length on my dress, I got to do whatever. They, they get before God, I got to trust God for my, they can keep rank. As hard as the message will come, as God would anoint the message, there were some saints that could actually keep rank. They call a whole meet with their children. Children, we're not going to involve ourselves in this no more. We, not be, we won't be going here no more. No, the, the word of God came, the Holy Ghost confirmed it, I'm backing up the message. See, some people, they can sit in the congregation, but they can't keep rank. They can sit there, they can hear the message, but they can't keep rank. See, some young people, they can keep rank. They praying, my God, before God. They're getting the Holy Ghost. They get strength and grace. See, let me just tell you this. 
why there's not a lot going on in your life. If you're not going through a lot of trials, you hear people testifying and stuff. I'm going through this. I'm going. If you ain't going through a lot, then you need to be getting before God, getting some grace down in your soul, building up your experience. So when you do go through a lot, my God, you're able to keep rank and not slow down, not look back, not get weary and well doing because it's not always going to be a flowery bed of ease. It's not always you're going to feel good in your body with a bunch of money in your pocket and you can do what you want to do. But the tide going to turn eventually. You're going to go through something. Good, God is no respecter of person, my God. The other say, the song poor said, shall we be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody heads cut off, children decapitated, wives messed up. And here we just going to deal with so and so didn't speak to me. No, sure, we must fight. It's good, brother. If we would reign, increase my courage, Lord. So while you're not going through a lot, don't spend all your time at Walmart. Don't spend all your time at the outlet. Don't spend all your time, my God, doing online, Facebook. We ain't got no time for that. It's good, brother. If you don't got enough on your plate to keep you off that mess, then my God, while you don't got enough on your plate, get a burden for somebody that do got too much on their plate. Amen. And get some time to get some before you. So when you do go through. So here they had the ability to keep rank. And what else? They were not of double heart. They were not of a double heart. My Lord. They were not of a double heart. They had a focus. They had a consecration. They was not of a double heart. They was totally given to God. They weren't trying to get to God and trying to be someone they job. I'm going to be the next so and so. No. Get that double heart out of here. We ain't got no time for no double hearts. Seek Amen. one thing, and that's the glory of God. If you're not seeking the glory of God and your heart is somewhere else, yes, we got to work, but my, your heart shouldn't, your affection shouldn't be all up in that stuff. Amen, brother. God do lead you, get a little certificate, get a little degree. Your heart shouldn't be, your heart needs to be here with the saints, my Amen, God. Brother. You shouldn't be fired up about the things of this world, but then you're dead towards the things of God. You can't have no double heart. Your heart needs to be 100% aligned with the things of God, the kingdom of God. We do not have a, a times of war. They wouldn't even let people write home. Don't even write home. Now, the, the, the battle is too hot for that. We don't need your double heart. They, you write home, they tell you, oh, your, your daughter had a great a reception. Now your heart is, oh, I miss, no, we ain't got no time to miss nobody right through here. Just they stay focused 100% on the battle is too hot for that. We cannot have a double heart, saints. My God, right through here, my God, we're not focused on nothing else but the glory of God and making it through and being a part of the remnant. Come on and read. Verse 34. And of Nephetili, a thousand captains. Uh-huh. And with them. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And with them, yes. with shield and spear, 30 and 7,000. And keep reading. Verse 35. And of the Danites. Come on, the Danites. Expert in war, 20 and 8,000. Another one. Experts in war. Okay, go to verse 32. Let's get our text. I mean, our time. Verse 32. And of the children of Issachar. So we want to preach tonight on the topic, the children of Issachar, or understanding the seriousness of our times. Read, brother. And of the children of Issachar. Of the children of Issachar who was. Which were men hold on, that had. Hold on. Hold on. Fifth son. Of Jacob and Leah. Between Judah. And Zebulon. So he was the fifth son of Jacob and Leah. His grandfather. Was Isaac. Great grandfather. Was Abraham. The children of Essachar will be the only ones that make it. The times we're living in right now are the most challenging times the church has ever seen. The prophecy said, Matthew 24, he talked about when he should come back. He said, it shall be a tribulation like there had been no time before or after. He said it's going to be so bad right before the end. Except he shortened the time, the elect would make it out. You say, but Lee, well, uh, the six seal had to deal with a lot. The six seal had a one accordance from Maine to Montana. Do you know how difficult it is 
in this end time to find fellowship where you will be challenged and inspired and you can eat the whole word? I, sometimes I, I look back when I'm traveling through the country, I see a church of God here in Tennessee, and I go down to Exodus, I see a little church of God in Asia and all this other place. They were all, ch- go there now and try to listen and get some food. These brothers talking about faith. Do you know when they was preaching faith, do you know what the idolatry of the medical facilities and, and world was like? You, you, you know what it was basically made up of? It was basically made up of a time in which you go to the hospital, it was simply a bed with some solutions and some fluids up on a thing and, and with some, they would give you some potion or some, this, it was right now for what you got. They will look on the inside, show you exactly what it is, show you an expert that can cut it out by 12 o'clock, then you, they weren't dealing with what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a medical system right now that's so advanced, and we got to trust God knowing all of that. You, you understand how this is in a faithless age. A faithless age. Everything we need is right at our fingertips. It requires almost no faith to do nothing, but we got to exercise faith at the times of our life. In this end time, God is allowing it. Anything that you would rely on other than God will be removed out the way. It's good, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this. We had it. Anything that you would rely on other than God himself, God's going to just remove it out your life. When he gets to the, when he gets to the end, you're going to, you're going to, only those with faith going to make it through. It's good. Only those with faith going to make it through. If your reliance is on anybody, anything, if you think, I'm just telling you right now, you better know no man other than Christ, you know, the, I, my eyes on Jesus. Yes, it's good to have a good congregation, but if your reliance is on where you go to church at, then your reliance is in the wrong place. That's good, brother. If you're, oh, it's good to have a good preacher, setting you, up, you better be careful putting your reliance on man. It's good to have encouragement. It's good to have somebody you can have confidence in, but your reliance better be in God because man will fail you. Man can be idolatry. You can mess around and give man a glory that you should only be given God. No man died on the cross for you. No man by God. That's all right. no. I'm going to preach anyway. No man gave his life for you. It is never right. I don't care who it is. We give honor to whom honor is due. But we don't reverence nobody but God. That's why we don't use the word reverend. Reverend so and so. The Bible's don't reverend. No. God, I appreciate the preacher, but he ain't me. Your reliance is going to be on God. Only those that make it through is going to have a person. See, some people, they relate. The Bible said uh, in, the, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Why it took Uzziah dying before you saw the Lord? God had to move somebody out the way so you can really get your, your reliance going to be on me. Good, I'm going to see who really got this thing. Good, brother. I'm going to move everything out the way. Only those that really got an experience with Almighty God, Jesus had to go in the garden by himself. Three Hebrew boys had to go down there by himself. Daniel had to go in the lion's den by himself. But thank God when you're down in there, you won't be left by yourself. A fourth man. Amen. A fourth man will show up in the fire and be there for you until the end. All right. Let's break this down. Come on and read, brother. And of the children of Essachar, of the children of Essachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. Which were men. It said that so-and-so was an expert in war. So-and-so had an expert in this. So, but it just said the children of Essachar, men who had an understanding of the times. Keep reading, brother. Which were men that had understanding of the times. Yes. To know what Israel ought to do. To what? To know what the church of God ought to do at that moment. Read, brother. The heads of them were 200. Yes. And all their brethren were at their commandment. Whoa. Whoa. He said so-and-so expert in war. So-and-so had a shield and a spear. So-and-so had that. So-and-so knew all instruments. They... When he saw... The children of Essachar, 
You may be great with that spear, but if you don't know where we at in the battle, you may can sing real good, but if you don't know where we at in the battle, you may can preach real good, Whoa! but if you don't know where we at in the battle, if you don't perceive what's going on, you may be a good saint, you've been around here for 30 years, Whoa! wonderful, you're a good saint, but if you don't perceive where we at in the battle, you'll be no good at that moment because you'll end up confused. It's good, brother. He said the children of Essachar, children of Essachar, he said they knew what Israel ought to do. They understood the seriousness of the time. Here, you got a great, you understand uh, uh, Hebrew, Greek, and all this other stuff, but you had the parks when we were playing games, we had folk dying. Uh -huh. Serious? You up here seeking, you, 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 you up here seeking, oh yeah, I'm going to get this degree, and I'm going to get this degree. Don't you realize that we, the time is so short, you probably won't finish the first one you're trying to go pursue? And here we got young people dying and going to hell at your school, but you're so worried about getting your degree, you ain't invited nobody to church. You have no fire whatsoever. My God, every generation needs some fire in that so they can relate to that generation. Pray for us tonight, saints. It's imperative. One of the most challenging responsibilities of the prophet is to warn the people and awaken the people of where they're at in that time. Go over to Matthew 16, verse 1. Jesus did not take it lightly when those who were claiming to be spiritual didn't perceive the time that we're in. Matthew 16, verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? You claim to be so spiritual. You can tell us all about, what's that storm, Florence? You can tell, oh, yeah, it's going it's to landfall at 12 o'clock, and tomorrow it's going to be. You can tell all about the natural things. You can tell about the stock market. Oh, yeah, we want your credit score. Oh, yeah, all you got to do is get your credit right. You got All you know is you, you're so focused. And you can tell, all, oh, you can tell, oh, political. Oh, yeah, don't you know you to vote for this person, this person. And don't you realize we got way more serious things on our plate right now than that? It's good, brother. Don't you realize the depth of what we, we the devil trying to eliminate us right now? The devil trying to wipe us off the face of the earth right now? You can discern, my God, all these other things. But you can't perceive the depth of where we at? Don't you realize the devil's trying to take these children out of here? Here, you can't bring your children to church. Can't bring your children to Sunday school. Don't bring them to Monday night. Don't bring them to this. But you can travel all over America to take them to this practice, that practice, this game, that... See, you don't perceive by, by, by the time you think, you think, you think you're going to get a burden for your child. Your child already got too many spirits that they can't get freed from. You're going to wait. I'm going to I'm wait and pray for my child until they become a teenager. Because, are you serious? That's when you're going to get serious about family devotion? When they get a to do it. Well, they may not can perceive. Tough, you may not can perceive. You'd be shocked what they can per perceive. You better start when they in diapers telling them about God, Jesus, the Bible, the word of God. We're not trying to raise no uh, uh, number one draft picks, no scholars, no this, that, and the other. We're trying to raise laborers for God, period. Train up a child in the way he should go. That's our responsibility. But here, he said, they don't understand it. They can understand all the natural. Oh, yeah. Okay, by the fourth grade, your child needs to have this function and this function, and they need to know this right here. And by the fifth grade, they need to know, make sure this right here. If they don't have their, uh, if they don't have this right here, if they don't have the foundation for math, by the fourth, you understand all of that. But you don't understand that children today are getting spirits bound up, sexual confusion. While you playing games, the devil ain't playing. Good, While you waiting, the devil ain't waiting. You can perceive everything else. Got a whole category of academic pursuit, four rooms in your house dedicated to it. But not have a serious family devotion in six months. You got balls for every sport. Ball for this, ball for that, ball for this, ball for... And you don't realize the devil is after our children because that's the future. 
can't perceive it. It's good, brother. The children of Essachar, they perceived. They perceived. And when they perceived, they said, ask for me and my house. I don't care which I'm not going to follow nobody else. Why? Their vision may be off. They might be saved. I understand that. But they may not be the children of Essachar. Come on and read. Oh, ye hypocrites. Okay, go over to Revelation chapter 1, verse number 1. Revelation chapter 1, begin reading at verse number 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is not the revelation of John. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Come on and read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Which God gave unto him. God gave it to him. Come on and read. To show unto his servants. To things. show unto his servants, saints of God, spiritual understanding, spiritual discernment is critically important. We cannot, saints of God, listen to me. If you are not up under a ministry in which, my God, they are spending time and they perceive where we're at today, I'm telling you, it, it, you probably won't make it. I'm just being real with you. When I get done with the message, you'll perceive it. You probably, I was so burdened about this. My God, we are where we at because a prophet was among us. A prophet that perceived where we was at. It was confusing times. It was time that you really couldn't know. If you wasn't up under a prophet, you wouldn't be experiencing what we're experiencing today. It's good, brother. He perceived where we were at in the gospel day. God revealed. And I'm going to tell you, no man can show you this. A man may can preach it, but God got to reveal this thing to you. It's good, brother. You got to pay before God to perceive where we are at. Many times people, why are you saying why? You don't perceive. You better be careful. It's good, brother. You better be careful where we Amen. at, my God. Come on and read. The revelation of Jesus Christ, yes. which God gave unto him, yes. to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Come on, he's showing you what things must shortly come to pass. The book of Revelation is a beautiful book. Yes. To Why? Because it reveals to us, children of Essachar, they understood the times. This enlightens us where we're at, what we need to do, how we can be victorious, what we need to watch, be watchful for. Come on and read. And he sent and the signified. The prophetic message is a critical message for the church. In every age in which a people was spared, the message of prophecy played a critical role. Come on and read, brother. And he sent and signified it he by his angel. He sent and signified, which means to put in symbols. It's symbolic. You got to understand the symbols to really break it down. By his angel unto a servant John. Read. Who bear record of the word of God uh -huh. and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Come on. And of all things. John actually was there with him. He bore record. He was able to testify. Come on and read. And of all things that he saw. Come on. Taking up to the Mount Transfiguration. John was there. Come on and read. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. My, my, my. And Blessed is he that readeth. Dig into it, pursue it, and they that perceive here receive the words of this prophecy. Come on and read. And kept those things and which keep are written. those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. So here he said in Revelation, he said, you're going to be blessed. Why? Because the things in this book will show you. Where we at? It will give us insight good, brother. on how we're to prepare ourselves. We don't have to be confused by nothing. We can perceive exactly where we're at. Good, brother. We know exactly what we're dealing with. On, we can tell the enemy to fall off. We can tell an uncertain sound to fall off. Why? Good, we didn't hear you, but we've already studied prophecy. We know what to look for. That's good, as soon brother. as you get up there with that mess, we know exactly what camp you're in. Amen, brother. We're not confused. Amen, Put it in brother. any type of package it, in any type of way you want to, have any name on the door. You want it, my God? Amen, but brother. we know your spirit. That's right, brother. Amen. Why? Because we know the word of God. Amen, we know brother. prophetically what's going to happen at the end time, and you're a victim of it. That's good, brother. If you don't got perception, if you don't got perception, and you don't understand you end up confused. Like Brother Hampton said, following the voice of the last speaker. Getting pulled in some back room, I got confused, but something you don't know about. Come on, brother. But here, Amen. he said, those that will listen and get up on it, that's why you can't just go to church anywhere. Just talk about, I'm just moving over here. Are you sure? 
Amen. Are you really sure? Amen, well, brother. I went to a meeting and the songs was good. You better be careful. Better watch it, brother. Every meeting is inspiring. You better be careful. Amen, you better brother. be careful. Your eternal destination will be predicated upon where you sit, what ministry you sit Amen, upon. That's right, brother. Come on, brother. You don't brother. play no games with this. It's too late today for that. Amen, Ain't no brother. time for no John 3. It's just simple to know. We're dealing with the deep things of this world. That's right, brother. We got to be up under a deep gospel that challenges us, that inspires us, that enlightens us, that gives us a certain mindset towards warfare. Amen, brother. We don't pet no false spirits. Amen, we don't play brother. with no false spirits. Amen, we don't toy with no false Amen, spirits. I don't care brother. who it is. Why? Because right, that spirit. It's trying to That's right, brother. If you're not up under an inspiration and inspired instructive word, then you'll be petting stuff you should be slaying. That's right, brother. You don't toy with now. I don't care who it is. Amen. Mama, daddy, brother, sister, come. I don't care who it is. You gotta have a mindset. Amen, brother. I'm going all the way with this gospel. So here. Go over to 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse number 1. The children of Essachar. My God, they perceive where we're at. I know no man after the flesh. They perceive where we're at right now. Come on and read. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the later times. That in the latter times. Some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith. faith. Now, mind you, break this down in the Greek. It didn't say they're going to depart from the church. <laughs> it didn't say they're going to depart from a fellowship. All right, brother. They're going to depart from the faith, Amen, the gospel. Go over to Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Matthew 24, verse 14. Saints of God, we cannot change one thing about the gospel and remain in the gospel. You better perceive the word tonight. My God, the children of Essachar, they understood the times. There's going to be a time where many are going to be departing from the faith. They may stay right here. And the faith, you know what the faith is? The faith is the gospel of Jesus Christ, exactly what he preached and what he meant when he preached. It. Amen, brother. Period. Amen. That's the gospel. You, many are going to depart from that. They may depart. Listen, you getting saved, you coming up under this gospel, the greatest light that God has ever revealed to you, you got to come back to that gospel. You can't come back to nothing less. Good, you can't, it ain't up to me to change it. Ain't up to so-and-so said, I'm not, no, what did Jesus say? What is the greatest light that I knew about? If you knew wearing pants was wrong, then you can't be around here for no six weeks still with your tight pants on. You got to come back to the faith, that gospel that God revealed to you. Come on and read, brother. And this gospel, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a that witness. That brother, my God. Well, look, the free Methodists, they over in Africa, they over, so we ain't got to go. No, 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 no. The Bible said, with this gospel, justification, sanctification, That's right, brother. unity of God's people, everything Jesus, modesty, marriage and divorce, every element of what Jesus preached and what he meant when he preached it. Amen, brother. He said, some going to depart from that. That's right. They're going to get worldly. That's what's going to happen. They're going to be right among you. They're going to depart from the faith. Come well, on, I'm brother. still saved. Come on, you brother. might say, say what you want to say, That's but right, you're not brother. in the faith no more. Come on, brother. Okay, go over. I'm sorry. Go over to Galatians. It's only one gospel, saints. It's not two. You can't say nothing. You don't understand the word of God. You don't understand the times that we're in. I don't know where you're going to church or what you're doing. You're playing games somewhere. I didn't mess this all the way up. It fell all the way apart on me. I hold it now. We'll be all right. Come on and read. Galatians. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. It's only one gospel, brother. Amen. I busted all the way out. I just hold it. I'm good. Come on and read. I marvel. I marvel. That ye are so soon removed from him that called you. Saints, it don't take long. Oh, Lord. Saints, don't ever take it for granted in thinking. That you got this thing, nobody can move. This brother, Paul, he had deserved, he had experience. He still said, I marvel. Wow. That's good. I marvel. I marvel that you what? Come on and read, brother. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you. And Saints, I've grace. been marveling lately. Oh, Lord. I marvel. I marvel 
He said this was going to happen. Some shall depart from the faith. He said, I marvel. Last year you was doing this and believing this, but now you don't believe that? No, I marvel. That's tough, brother. I marvel. But thank God I'm a child of Essica. I understand the times we're in. Good. And I knew this was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to happen to you, but I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. It's been preached to me my whole life. After my departure, it's been preached to me my whole life. At the end time, perilous times going to come. Many going to depart. It's been preached to me my whole life. I didn't know you was going to become a statistic. Oh my. After you set up under all of this, it's only one God. Don't come around and say this ecumenical eighth be spirit. Come on, brother. Everybody's right. Let's all come to. Go that's to not the message on, of God. Amen. That's brother. not the end time. Don't Amen, you realize brother. that they said that that spirit was going to take over the earth? On, Let's all come together and have a unity meeting. On, My God, why isn't it ever at any of these unity meetings they're dealing with a doctrine, on, sound brother. doctrine, going back to what the six year priest? Won't you call that meeting, my God? Going back to what the apostles preach. It's never about come that. On, but it's always about hugging each other, shouting each other, some false, fickle, jelly back unity that's fake and phony but it's not real because unity is not of the letter it's of the spirit you gotta have the same spirit you gotta have a spirit that's going after God a spirit that's contending for the faith amen brother come on and read brother I marvel that ye are so soon I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of from Christ. the gospel that called you the gospel that saved you if it didn't work why did it save you so good if it didn't work why did it sanctify you so good if it didn't work, then why did it seal your mother so many times? Why did it raise you in this gospel and keep you sustained to where you're at today? If it didn't work, my God, why did it work so good on you? Come on, brother. Or did it? Amen. Come on and read. Unto another gospel. Unto another gospel. Which is not another. Which is not a, why, why is it not another? Because there's not another. Come on, brother. It's only one church. Amen. It's only one gospel. Amen. It's only one Lord. Amen. It's only one baptism. Amen. And if you get out of an understanding, on, you will be confused. Why don't we fellowship there? Why don't on, we brother. go here? Why don't we? Because it's not the gospel of Jesus That's right, Christ. Brother. That's right. Amen. You can't leave this. That's right, brother. You can't toy with this. You can't change this. Go over to Revelation 14. See, you say, Brother Lee, well, we can change something. You can't change one thing about the gospel of Jesus. Revelation 14, 6. The children of Essachar, they understood that at the end time, many going to depart from the gospel. It don't take all that. I ain't got to trust God. The Bible said call for the elders of the church. Well, Luke was a physician. You don't find Luke practicing after he ran into Jesus. Come on, brother. If that was the case, then why didn't they call for Luke? You don't hear nowhere in the Bible. Talk about if, if, if physicians was our answer to our physical ailments, then they wouldn't have said the elders. They would have said, any sick among you, let them call for Luke. Come on, brother. But that wouldn't have worked. Amen. Why? Because one day Luke was going to die. But thank God when you put divine healing in the church, it'll last, it'll be there. My God, from one generation to the next, we don't got to worry about so-and-so die. I appreciate that, but my God, the gospel is still here. Amen, brother. Come on and read, brother. Can't change the gospel. And I saw another angel. And I saw another angel. Fly in the midst of heaven. Fly in the midst of heaven. Having the everlasting gospel. Having the everlasting. Fly in the midst of heaven. It's, not, it's so beautiful Amen, to be in an atmosphere in which an angel is flying in the midst Amen, of heaven. Brother. My God, just flying Amen. with freedom and liberty. Nobody around, with the brother, brakes brother. on them. But my God, where the on, spirit brother. of the Lord is, there is liberty. Preach it, brother. Amen. Sound it, brother. Proclaim it, brother. Amen. Let the gospel go forward. Amen. Said, I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven. Not talking about that heaven, but the Bible said Come we're on, made brother. to sit together in heavenly places yes, in Christ Jesus, my God. Amen, brother. Church of the firstborn. The church of God. He said, I saw an angel flying in the midst of it. What did he have? Having he had a generational gospel. Come on, brother. Had a first seal gospel. Come on, brother. Had a 1980 gospel. Having had a 1990 lasting. gospel. Come on, had the everlasting God. The same gospel that they preached in the first seal is the same gospel we got to preach today. Amen, brother. It's an everlasting God. You can't change nothing. Amen. He's trying to mess with the gospel. Amen. Amen. I'm a child of Essachar. Come on, brother. I perceive the time where anybody that come with some change foolishness, my ears go up. Come on, brother. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm a child brother. of that. I know what time we're in. Amen. And I'm just trying to see if you become a victim. Come on, That's brother. what Brother Hampton was saying. My guns on anybody. Not that I don't like you. I'm just trying to see. Have you become a victim? Come on, brother. What you've been listening to? My Lord. All these online sites and this, that, and the other. Oh, I heard a glorious message. I went online. I mean, you better be careful. Come on, brother. 
Don't come with no foolishness, my God. That's right, brother. Here, they said he had the everlasting gospel. The gospel do not change. All right. Let's go over to Joel chapter 2. Serious times required a serious message. Joel, the second minor prophet of the 12. This was post-exile after the building of the second temple. So they come out of exile, Babylonian exile. Gotten in a situation in which God had to raise up a prophet. <coughs> come on and read. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. He said, don't toy with it. Don't tickle it. But blow it. Blow. Don't hold it. <laughs> don't wave it. Amen, brother. But blow it. Amen. He said, blow ye the trumpet. If you're going to be a prophet, you can't be a jelly bag. Don't look at their faces. Amen. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. See, the prophet understood that Israel's future was predicated on the blowing of the trumpet. Come on and read. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Do you some push-ups, some sit-ups, so you can get some wind in your lungs. Amen. Don't be out of shape, my God, and flimsy and all this other stuff. My God, but make sure you spiritually are in shape. Have your devotion. Amen. Make sure your fast life is tight. Amen. Make sure your study time is tight. Make sure your consecration is impeccable. But blow ye the trumpet in Babylon. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. In where? Can't blow down. Zion. In Egypt. No. Zion, brother. He said. Listen, it's a time for evangelism. Come on, Come on, it's brother. a time, amen, for dealing with apostates. Come on, brother. But here he said, if we're going to make it out of this, if we're going to be okay, he said, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. If Zion's going to make it, it's going to be because there's a clear trumpet being blown. Amen. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. This is the blowing of the trumpet is a clear, distinct Message from God to the people for that time and what God would have for them to do. Blow ye the trumpet. He didn't say, my Lord. He didn't say the harp. It's a time to comfort, but it's a time to blow the trumpet. He didn't say the dulcimer. It's a time for rejoicing and all that other stuff. But here, he said, go get the trumpet. Amen. Blow ye the trumpet. If they're going to make it out, and they're going to deal with what we're dealing with today, it's going to be because a clear trumpet is being blown that actually brings forth. See, some stuff is like this right here. Some instrument. Oh, it feels wonderful. And some. Oh, it feels wonderful. See, but the trumpet. See, the trumpet gives a. Thank you, Sister Credit. Preach the message, amen. The trumpet gives a certain sound. See, you mess around an apostate, you don't know what y'all stand for, what y'all don't. Come on, brother. It's confusion. That's right, it's brother. no certain sound. Do we do this or do we don't? Do we stand for this or do we don't? If we stand for this, then why are they doing it? If we stand for this, they doing it, and they up here. Why are they up here? So I don't, we're, we're, can, you, can we get a certain sound on this issue? Can you get before God? and get a certain sound on this issue so the camp can be clean and we all can be unified on the word of God and not this family doing what they want to do, this family doing what they want to do, sister so-and-so doing what she want to do. On, no, it's not no any, meeny, mighty, mo. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, brother. We got to align with God's gospel, amen. Come on and read. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm. Sound an alarm. Name. Alarm. Wake them up. Wake them up. Don't let them hit the snooze. Wake them up. Sound the alarm. Saints of God, we're in the most serious time in the history of the church. We've never seen a time like this. It's time for an alarm. If you're not woken up, I'm telling the saints the other day, if you're middle age, then you need to begin praying like you're old age. If you're older, then you need to be before God. Saying, Lord, I cannot just be an older saint around here. I have to be a pillar. 
since the green is gone, since Robinson's right in front of, I was telling one of the saints the other day, I said, if God was to reveal to you the condition we're really in right now, I said, who ever heard of a congregation that in three years lose 85 to 90 percent of their gospel workers? I don't even want to say, people talk about, but him, every time, but him. It's way deeper than that. Don't you realize? Yes, he's gone, but all of those that built him up and surrounded him that were skilled at midnight and knew the warfare that led the charges, this, that, and the other. I always thought if something happened to Brother Hampton, at least we got all of these. But God said, you know what? These is gone, he gone, y'all gonna rely on me. He said, sound the alarm. It's no time for young people to be up and down, my God. It's no time, my God, for folk struggling with a fast life. We got folk, my God, on their way to eternity, and you can't leave a cheeseburger alone for half a day. Unbelievable. I, I don't understand this. We got folk, my God, coming back. They got to come back to the most high, dealing with all type of situations, and you half want to come to church. Are you serious? Coming late, leaving early? And if you're doing any functioning, you need to be here when the church starts and when it closes. You are before the people. You need to be an example. The Bible said forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. That don't mean you come at 7 and leave at 7.30 and leave the saints to do the heavy lifting. That don't mean, my God, you do what you want to do and walk in here at 8 o'clock and leave the saints to do Sound an alarm. This foolishness will not make it today. We will cease to exist. It's too late in the gospel day for that. Everybody needs to stand up. Step up. Go deeper, my God. I don't give you a mother. Get before God. Figure out a way. Iron clothes. Pray. 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 Everybody got to just break up your f- preacher. Read the word. Blow ye the trumpet in Blow Zion. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm sound in an my alarm. holy mouth. This is not a one-man show. It's not a two-man show. Everybody got to step up. Nobody can do business as usual. You cannot be what you was last year unless you won't make it. God came through here, my, my God. He told them to blow a trumpet. He said, listen, can they keep rank? If they doing what they did last year, they will not keep rank where we're going right now. They will not understand. They will not perceive. Why? Because the Bible spoke about the 12 virgins. Said they all slumbered and slept. Every just, just, just slumbering. Some sleep, some slumber. Slumber and slept. He said, but at midnight, a trumpet, the midnight trumpet is blowing now. Get up. And I pray you got oil. Come on and read. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Come on and read. For the day of the Lord. No, no, go back to verse number 15. Uh, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Uh Uh-huh. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain, Mount Zion. Read. Let all. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. A consecrated. Verse 15. Special fast, my God. It said, see, saints, we, just give me a few moments tonight. My goodness, Lord, help us. Man, this, I, I had to wrestle with this. It hit me so, I said, do we perceive where we're at? Do we understand where we're at for real? Camp surrounded. The camp surrounded every which way. This is the end of the end. We have to, saints, at the end, it's not about not just uh, don't mess up. We got to prepare the bride's final pieces. It said the bride had made herself. God said, I ain't going to do it. Y'all going to do it. Good, Y'all going to get every wrinkle up out of here. Every spot of the world up out of here. Every bit of loot. Y'all going to get before God and pray. It said the bride had made herself ready. We actually got that responsibility. No other. Say what you want. Talk about sixth seal, fifth seal. Talk about Brett Kinley. Brett. Talk about you guys. If God comes back in one month or five years, you all that are here have the divine responsibility of presenting the church to Christ. The it's gravity. Deep, I appreciate Luther. He had to deal with Catholicism. That's deep. I appreciate Wesley. He had to deal with the Anglican church. Shake it. That's deep. I appreciate Warner. He had to deal with denominationalism. Call people out of Babylon. That's deep. I appreciate Brother Kennedy for the heaven of no brother. They had to, my God, break their silence. Get before God. Get the notes on the trumpet. Go all over the world blowing the trumpet. I appreciate. But y'all, presenter. 
present the bride. It said the mountain that was on fire, the bride, 12 stars, the bride that shook the world. He said, I'm coming back for that same glory. Y'all got the response in a faithless age. Read, brother. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Yes. Sanctify a fast. It says sanctify a fast. A fast is a time of consecration. It says sanctify a fast. Consecrate the consecration of your life. Sanctify a fast. A fast itself is already a type of consecration. It says sanctify a fast. Go even deeper with this thing. Come on and read. Sanctify a fast. How in the world are you going to sanctify one when you don't got a fast line? Read. Call a solemn assembly. Call fast, a time of no food or water being consumed. A time where labors are exacted. A time of seeking God. A real fast. I'm not eating nothing today. I ain't drinking nothing. Let's go to the mall. I ain't going to no mall. I ain't going. I'm exacting my labors. Only things that I must do. And... I'm seeking God. Why sanctify? Because some fast, they just stop eating. But they, 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 they going shopping, they online, they playing video games, they, they, they on Facebook. If somebody told you, go on a two-day fast for no Facebook, they go, uh, uh, my fingers, I'm a dick, I'm, I get like crack. I just, I, I just wake up in the middle of the night and I just check my stats. Oh, it says sanctify a fast. Seek God, Lord. Amen. Tell them, it's time to seek God. If they're going to make it up out of here, the inspiration that we need now for faith to grab hold, we got to deal with unbelief all over the place. And doctors telling them, all they got to do is this right here, they're perfectly fine. We got to deal with all this stuff and build faith to an acceptable level. Saints, if we're not careful, we'll have 85% of the people around here hearing call for the elders, but 85% ain't trusting God. Yes, it's still being said. It's still being preached. It's, it's still being preached. But when they come to a moment, and it's a moment moment, if we're not kidding, it'll happen, it'll happen right before you are, and nobody be alarmed. I'm not even talking about the person here. I'm putting the pressure on us. It's them that is willing to trust. But my God, can we carry them like the woman was carried in the bed, press through whatever, and get them to Jesus? How in the world can my brother be struggling with this, my God, and I'm sitting here and doing my own thing, and I'm not inspiring their faith, giving up my own life so they can get to where they need to get to? It's too much going on right now for us not to be on our faces. It's good, brother. Before God, some stuff going to take more than a five-minute anointing pray. No, you have to work with it. You have to work with it. You have to build. You have to build more. You have to stay there. See, it's not about your initial faith. You got to maintain faith. You got to have faith in that moment. Come on and read, brother. Sanctify a fast. Many ministries are not dealing with this no more. Saints, I'm telling you. They're, they're done with it. It's too different. Now, this ain't the, I, I can't hardly get them to come to church, let alone see them carrying burdens through the night. No, they got jobs, and they got this. It can be so bad that the same going through don't really want to even call you. Hmm. Because you got too much going on in your life. You got too much in your life. You couldn't deal with what I really want to tell you. Can you, tell you, I can, you. You ain't in a position. You ain't in a position to break up your fallow ground. Stop what you're doing. What I need right now is not you to call me and read a scripture. I need you to stop what you're doing. Stay right here, brother, until the thing is over with. Yes. Who can Amen. I call? Amen. Who got the time, my God? Who is that burden? And I'm not saying doing that a formality. You can do some stuff to check a box. I did it. I called them. I checked them. No, coming with a burden, staying there. It's good, brother. He said, blow the trumpet. Shake them. This message right here cannot be preached in many churches of God pulpits. They'll run you out of town. See, you're just a young woman. You just a, you just a, you know. No, this is the message that we're going to have if we're going to be a part of the remnant. Come on and read, brother. Come Blow on, the read. trumpet in Zion. Blow the trumpet. I'm trying. B preach, but read, brother. Sanctify a fast. Yes. Call a solemn assembly. Call a solemn, a, a solemn, a deep, sincere, very serious, grave, extremely sober, <clears throat> assembling, a gathering together as one man, coming together on one accord. Not a group over there, a group over there. He said, call a solemn assembly get them all together on one accord like we did for the meeting amen get them not not you praying your club no coming all together what we dealing with is going to take a collective effort. that's why saints we have to 
pray that God baptize us with enough humility to get to the bottom of personal issues. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot allow personal issues to linger and not be dealt with. It's good, we got to humble ourselves, make ourselves vulnerable, go to somebody, talk. If we're not careful, you have something so deep in your heart against somebody, and you'll be going along with it like there's nothing there, and we can call something together, but we're really not together. We can say, come together, but we're really, it's that call a solemn assembly on one accord. In order to be on one accord, deal with whatever you got to deal with. Whatever she did to you, let that thing go. Let it go. Give it to God. It's too serious for that. Don't let nobody come up. Y'all talking about no little petty mess. It's too serious for that. We got folk dying on their way to, listen, we got folk, children, unsaved children, on their way to hell, coming to serve. They need fire when they come in this building. They need divine inspiration. Backsliders coming back got to deal with all type of stuff. Yeah. It takes one inspiration to actually come to an altar and really get saved. I mean saved. Where his chains is broken. Amen. There's a, a freedom and a, and a release and a witness in your soul. It takes one inspiration. But saints, do you realize it takes another whole inspiration to deal with everything you got to deal with to make it back it take another, if you just praying, oh, they went to the altar. And you ain't praying just as hard, creating just as much inspiration that they can go home and deal with whatever they got to deal with. It takes inspiration to get saved, and it takes inspiration to come back to the most high. Come on and read, brother. We got to realize this. The children of Esachar, they realize that. The devil want people to come and get saved, but they're not really coming back all the way. They still got things in their life. They still got this. They need inspiration. And know what inspiration is? Inspiration is when you got to deal with something, God gives you the wherewithal, gives you the grace, gives you the encouragement to deal with it, the courage to deal with it, and then the grace to deal with the aftermath of it, and God will make up any difference that you lose in, while you're dealing with that. God floods your soul so much that you don't realize what you just did, what you thought you was going to uh, just cry yourself, and you're going to know the inspiration was so alive in your life that God himself fulfilled anything. That's why he said, I'll give back a hundredfold. If you give up, I'll give you a hundredfold. Amen. What's that? It's just the joy of God down in your soul. Come on and read. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Stop what you're doing. Come. Sanctify the congregation. Consecrate them. Read. Assemble the elders. Bring the elders, my God. Gather Bring the my children. God. One night, Brother Hampton was dealing with this matter so deep. He told, he said, listen. He said, gather the children. He said, listen. Ain't nobody no Friday night class. Everybody in here. Everybody in here. But Tim, you want to teach all in one class? No, 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 no. Every teacher, they need to hear what I'm saying tonight. Stop what you're doing. Here he said, gather the, the ministry. It starts with you. Get an understanding of where we're at. Go on with this idea. You get a little good sermon. If that's what you think the ministry is right now, then you got another thing coming. You think you're going to get a little good sermon, people pat you on the back. Oh, you preach a good sermon. You have no clue what we're dealing with today. That's good, brother. You have no idea of what we, you call yourself a gospel worker? You want to be a laborer? No, you just want to get up. That's all you want to do. What you want to do? You just want to sing. No, you got to be willing to carry burden through the night. You got to be willing to stay there. You got to be willing to go as far as God will have. You don't know what your life going to end up. You don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know what God going to put his finger on. You must be willing to go as far as you have to go. Why? Amen, brother. The people are putting up their lives on the line for the gospel that you preach. Are you serious? It's good, brother. Are you serious? Like people, like priests. That's why I said call for. Keep reading, brother. We gotta get this done. Come on and read. Gather the people. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Come on. Assemble the elders. Yes. Gather the children. Gather the children. And those that suck the breast. The children need an understanding, my God. We were dealing with something, my God. The church was going through something. Children were talking behind the scenes at school about what was going on. I was so inspired. Heard one of the same children. They detailed this thing so deep. I said to them, they said, listen, God is doing this stuff. Folks don't want to do right. God going to get them up. I'm sitting there, and they give me a scripture and everything. Is line. Some saints have confused. I don't understand. What is it? Little children, I, I, I see clearly. I know exactly what's going on. I see, I know what they're doing. Because I know what they children. They children told me they're watching movies. they doing this. they doing that. they doing that. They children told me. I know what's going on. This is the church of God. You can't do that foolishness in the church of God. God has sent you a body here. The children 
They need to hear this message. Come on and read. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. Come on. And let the bride out of her closet. In Deuteronomy 24, 5, don't go there. One time in warfare, one time in warfare, they said, so-and-so don't have to go. You've been newly married for a year. You ain't got to go to war. This brother said, when this message is to be preached like it is tonight, there is no exemptions. The only exemption they had was the, the bride that just got married. Deuteronomy 24, 5, you can read it. It said, let those that just got married for a year, they can just honeymoon and let you ride. If you just got married, come up out your closet. If you, ain't no time for you to sit around here thinking about all day long who you're going to marry, picking out your dress. It's way too late for that. You should have got saved in the 80s. That's when, you, when they made a big deal out of it. Man, we used to have, but I have to stop that foolishness. We used to have wedding rehearsal every Friday night for like a year and a half. Can you imagine for a year and a half, you're a young person, coming into the sanctuary. I'm telling you what I know. I was there. I was in the wedding. Little boy. After service, young people sitting there. But Joe, like, Billy, why are you looking at me? I'm not looking at you, but Joe. <laughs> but Brent. But Brother so So But Rico, amen. There we go. But he, for every day for a year and a half, you know, they come in there. Surely. All the young people holding arms, walking up. And they hoping, Sister Pitts, I hope we get messed up so we can do it again. Yep, let's do it one more time. Let me hold your arm again. Surely. They giggle. My, this brother in the back room doing push-ups right before he's It's flexing. Flex. Brother, it's flexing. In the church of God, flexing while they're walking up the aisle. He said, listen. Where we at today? Ain't no time for that. Ain't no time for sitting up all night long. Talking about, if that's your quest. Then you, you were born in the wrong seal. <laughs> Brother said, though, though, those that, let me, let me, I'm almost done. Those that got married, those that thinking about getting married, and those, my God, that's been married for a while. Don't be just honeymooning all the time. So it's too serious for that. I don't care if you got one. You ain't going to be just, no, we, we, we're laboring. We, we got to get before God. Y'all need to be praying together, holding hands, praying together through the night, my God. Good, brother. Nobody is exempt. That's what he's preaching there, saints. He said the elder all the way down to the children. He said the only one that was exempt in Israel's history was those married because they couldn't focus. No doubt. Why they in war. He said, but now everybody's focus must be on the kingdom. Go ahead and read, brother. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. Yes, yes. And the bride out of her closet. Read, brother. Let the priest... The ministers of the Lord, come on, weep between the porch and the altar. The spiritual leaders, my God, weep between the porch and the altar. That was the middle court, inner court, in Second Chronicles 7. 7, don't go there. He told them to hollow that area between the porch of the temple and the altar, consecrated. He said, let them just stay right there. Weep between the porch and the altar. Seeking God's face, making sure they clear the altar, the brazen over the sacrifice is made, but don't even go in dealing with all the trimming of that. No, 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 no. Before, right now, we got to get things in order. Right now, we got to get the mind of God. Right now, we got to get the people's mindset focused, my God. We got to get the people to realize where we at right now. Just weep between the porch and the altar. Make sure the sacrifice, make sure they're holy. Make sure they're clear before God. Make sure they're clear. But before you go and trying to deal with right now, get their minds to understand. You can go inside and deal with the temple. You can deal with all that. You can deal with prophets. You can deal with all these other things. But if they don't have the mindset to perceive where we at, if they don't perceive the consecration that we need to be focusing on, if they don't perceive how the older saints need to go to another level, those, my God, there's ministry making sure they got every gift that's available to them the mothers my god gotta pray night and day for the children the older saints gotta pray night and day like never before those need to be raised up as pillars my god saying lord what i was last year i can't be right now lord thank you for shaking me thank you for waking me up thank you for dealing with me lord lord i want to be in my position for god's sake verse number 18 we're done I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead, verse 17. Read. What is they saying? Let, let the priest, yes. the ministers of the Lord, yes. weep between the porch and the altar. Yes. And let them say, spare thy people, Lord, spare O Lord. spare people, Lord. And give not Lord, thine heritage. Lord, would often say, pray that we be counted worthy. He said, Lee, pray that we be counted worthy. God is only bringing a remnant. It's not that people want to go into apostasy. It's not that they want to compromise. It's what it takes to stay out of it that they're not willing to do. Wow. Mm. 
tough, brother. Saints, you're going to be worldly if you're not consecrated. You can preach all you want against world, and if you don't have a people that's consecrated, you're going to put your energy somewhere. Mm. He said, my God, they, they, please, Lord, spare your people. We know unbelief is all around. Father, we know, dear God, there's difficulties all around. Father, we know, spare your people, God, spare your people. Read, brother, read. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep yes. between the porch and the altar, yes. and let them say, spare thy people, spare your people O Lord. Lord. And give not thine heritage to reproach. Give not thy inheritance. Heritage. Thy heritage. God's people for heritage is culture, tradition, beliefs received from a prior generation. God's people from one generation to the next. Each generation has a certain, has serious obligation to maintain the integrity of the gospel in the way in which it was handed down. Hmm. Please give not thy heritage to reproach. Reproach is an expression of rebuke, shame, disgrace, scorn, disapproval, rejection. Lord, we've inherited it, a heritage that's yours, your people, Lord. You spared us. But, Lord, don't give us to reproach. Don't give us to disapproval, to rejection, to the heat that we what? Read, brother. We've done. Come on, read. That the heathen should rule over them. That the heathen, pagan, infidel, unbelief, shall rule over the world, its systems. We're going to run to it. It rules over us. That's who we go to. That's who control us. That's who tell us when we're going to live, when we die. That's who's going to tell us when our bills is paid, when they're not paid. That's what the heathen rule. Oh, we're going to things other than God. We are relying on things other than God. They're ruling over us. They got the last say in our affairs. They got the last say in what we're dealing with. The heathen ruling over us. Things that should be up under our feet. Things that should be coming to us. My God, we're going to them. The heat. Read, brother. Matters we should be dealing with. Staring us in the face. Making us run. The, to the heathen for help. The Bible said, woe unto those that go to Egypt. The heathen is ruling over many Church of God congregations. They got the last say. That's who they run to. And who you run to is who rule over you. Come on and read. And give not thy inheritance to reproach. Don't give us to reproach. Read. That the heathen should rule over them. Uh-huh. Wherefore should they say among the people. And they going to say among their people. Where is their God? Where is the church of God's God at? Where y'all God at? Y'all talk about that faith. Where y'all God at? Where, 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 where y'all? What he said. If you blow the trumpet in Zion and the people respond, verse 18, then will the Lord be jealous for his land. The Lord will be jealous of his land. And he pity. said the trumpet was blown. The people received it, perceived it, ate it up, said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I want to be among those that's weeping. I want to be among those, the children of Essachar that understands where we're at. Lord, I receive it. God said, that's what I've been waiting for. That's what I've been reading, brother, real quick. Come on, read. Then will the Lord be jealous for yes. his land. I got y'all. Come on. pity his These people. are my people. Yes, read. Yea, the Lord will answer and yes. to this people. Come on. Behold, I will send you corn and wine. Thank God he's sending some corn and wine tonight. Read. And oil. Yes, some anointing. Read, brother. And ye shall be satisfied I'm going to bless you with souls being saved. I'm going to bless you with a good meeting. Come on and read, brother. And I will no more make you a reproach among you the heathen. You ain't got to run no more. You ain't got to go to nobody but me. Read, brother. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Come on. Armies that are around you. Amen. Things y'all been dealing with. Thank God I'm going to remove them out the way. Read, brother. And we'll drive him into a land barren and desolate. Come on and read. Don't with fight against the church of God. With the East Sea. Yes. And his hinder part toward the uttermost. Uh-huh. See, and his stink shall come up. Come on, verse 25. Read. And I will restore to you the, the years, years the locusts have the eaten. The locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar. The palmer worm, 
I'm going to restore the power, the gifts through the silence. Things were lost, my God. Amen. Calling the asylum, a, a, a solemn assembly, my God. Those, thank God, Brother Hampton been sounding this trumpet for years, amen. The saints are responding to it. This generation is not going to let it down. This generation is going to say, Lord, spare your people. We know we short staff. We know we don't have a lot of gospel work. Lord, we know this, my God. But, Lord, don't let us go to reproach. Lord, we know faith is at an all-time low. But, Lord, don't let us go to reproach, dear God. Father, we want to make the integrity of the gospel, my God. Father, we want to do what's right. We want to raise our children right. Lord, we want to pray and be able to get a prayer through, amen. Lord, we need you to help and save and sanctify. Bring back the backslider, my God. Don't just bring them back to an altar, but bring them back to the most high God. God said when the trumpet is blown, it's good, brother. to awaken the people, the people respond. He said, then I will respond. The children of Essachar, those that understood where we at, and what we need to do, and God will respond. May God bless us.